everyone today i'm going to teach you how to make these adorable uh, bows i'm going to refer to them as quad bows mark ii because they're a similar sort of making method there's just a few extra folds in this one and i've got the 1.5 inch uh, sizes which is what we're going to be making today but i've also made it in this adorable little one inch version as well and this measures let me just get my ruler this one measures just under three inches, as you can see, and the 1.5 inch version from tip to tip, it's like five and a half, but the main part of the bow is like three and a half. So the main part of that one is actually only like two and a half, almost, yeah, two and a half. So it's almost doubled in size, but they're just so cute. So that's the bow we're going to be making today, and we've got the half pinwheel base bow as well. Put that out of the way. And you need two pieces, 31 and a half centimetres. So 31 and a half, and we're going to pin in at seven and a half from the left. Six stitches, three creases, and the base bow is 34 centimetres. But all this information, including the measurements for the one inch version, will all be in the description box below. So there's that. And there's the pinwheel bow half um, shape, so we can do that later. So, like I said, we've pinned seven and a half centimetres in, as I said, from the left. I have to excuse me, I get confused with my left and my right, as we know. So start from your pin, and you want to fold a triangle down so that you've got this shape facing towards your pin. And then we turn that across so that you've got this triangle shape. And then this piece is folded behind. Now this won't easily fit, it won't be a perfect line up because it's obviously half a centimetre shorter so that's where you get the curve of your shape so that's why it's important to have that half centimetre difference on your make I'll just move my measurement book out of the way so I don't glue it to my desk and from here I'll just take a little clip and what you want to do because this is the important bit all of these edges need to line up so I'm just going to put the clip across there to hold everything in place now from this corner so from where that ribbon starts there, you want to do a triangle up, so fold it away from you, from that edge, just there, and then this is going to go over this, so you've got this shape. And again, I just take the clip so it holds it across there. Then we're going to tuck this over. So again, it's all squared up. And move your clip. At this point, you can take your pin out. I'm just going to rub them to get rid of the mark on my ribbon. Okay, and then using your base as a guide, so this edge, you want to do the triangle, and your triangles are always going in. So you're folding those over, and again, your start point is at that edge. And then you flip this up, so that it covers this area. And again, move your clip, and then we're going to bring this round. I'm going to take this and move it this side for a second. So you've got this piece. And with this one, again, you want your triangle facing down. And I just line up the edge, because we want this to be nice and straight as well. And I just do a little line up there. And then you bring that directly over. So that your point is meeting the edge of this one. And you will have this look. So this is your front. And this is what your back will look like. So it'll be a perfect square in the back and you'll have this shape because this is what opens up to give you this like pocket effect. 
Okay, and then we're going to repeat exactly the same steps on this one. I'm going to just straighten my pin because it's a bit of a wonky angle there. There we go, that's better. So again, we want the triangle down because all the triangles are down. Turn this across so you've got this point to start off with. This goes behind and like I said, this is a little bit tighter to create that curve. Go. Okay. Take a clip, or you can do it with a dress pin. And make sure your edges are all lined up. I'm just going to heat seal that because it's got a little bit of fray there. And then from this side, using this edge as a guide. Try and go up. And fold across, clip it so it's holding everything in place. You can take pin out at this point. We fold that back over and reclip. a little bit so I'm just going to adjust it so it all sits nicely so there we go and then turn it so this way is facing away from you using that corner again triangle across flip it up clip that across fold that behind Maybe clip to the opposite side and you want it nice and tightly squared. And then obviously you triangle this one down just so you know this one might be a little bit extra. Yep, I've got a teeny tiny bit extra on that one so I'm just going to trim that down by half a centimetre just so it's nice and tight and squared. Don't want it to look baggy and, and silly, so there we go, that's better. So the triangle should be coming from that point to that point, you shouldn't have any excess left. So get that nice and centered, cornered, and then we bring that across, and again, that edge, that point should be right across that edge and that's where all of our pocketed is Every, all the edges are in there all lined up because that's where we're going to do our stitches we want all of them caught together in that bit so both of those pieces across here so as I drop my needle and thread and just remember you can make these in two pieces and glue them together I just do the cinch uh, stitch method because I prefer that personally so I'm just going to move this a little bit out of the way and what you want to do from above you want to be making sure you're capturing all those layers so you're going through the triangle points of all of those that you pocketed together in one two three I'm just moving that out of the way four five and your sixth one wants to be coming from beneath and again you want to be going through all those triangles from the back to the front through the tip of that one like so and then we're going to do it exactly the same from this and we're starting from the edge where it's folded in same as this side so from above, capturing all those triangles, one, two, three, I'm just going to check that last triangle because I think that has slipped a little bit, yep it did, I'm just going to make sure I capture the layers, don't want to miss any and have it go out of shape 
five. And like I said, last one. Through all of those, because like I said, the main reason this bow might go wrong is if you haven't captured any of those bits in the middle that are all sandwiched as we're doing it. Okay, so we've got three on the back, three on the back, and this will be our three creases on each side. So this is your fronts at the moment, and this is the backs. And I'm using doubled Gutemann strength, extra strength thread so I can get my creases pulled tightly. So I'm going to pull them together like this. I'm going to take this side and I'm going to go back through. Back through the original stitches. Use your desk if you need to. So back up through that and pull them through. It is a lot of layers so it does take a little bit of force and pull that round and again I'm going to line up my three creases this side and I'm going to do exactly the same as I just did with the other one back through the original or as close to the original as you can use your desk if you need to and there you go this is what you've got at the moment and then I pull that extra tight and I'm just going to stitch off A couple across the back last one and then just pop that so that the creases are lined up because like I said it's all about balance these ones so there is our main bow now, like I said, it doesn't look quite like mine at the moment, but don't worry, because that's the whole last parts that we do in a minute. So I'm just re-threading my thread. So this is your front at the moment, and this is what the back looks like. And then we've got our 34 inches of 1.5 inch ribbon. And we take it like this, and all you do is you make an S shape, and you can do it this way. Or if you wanted to, you can do it that way. So it depends on which way around you like your, your tails. So you can do it from the left or the right. And all I do is I leave about two centimetres each side so it's even. And you're basically just making like a Z shape. And like I said, it doesn't matter which direction you do it. So I'm going to do it from the opposite way. So I'll do it from there because I want to see more of that pink. And the other thing I do when I'm doing this is I take my little main bow and I place that on top. And I only like to see like a little half centimetre behind the, the main bow. So if you've got more or less, you can sort of pull them like this and get like a more balanced or like push them back a little bit so that they've got a balanced amount behind the bow. So if you've not got too much or too little. Okay, and once you're happy with how much you've got either side of your bow, I'll take a clip here and then spin it and clip it across here and then fold it and I put it so that the edges are to edge, edge and as you can see that tail is a little bit longer than the other so just turn it over and using that one as a guide We can trim that down so that they're even and then I like curved tails so I do it at this point because again I can use each edge as a guide. Don't forget to heat seal in the clear blue bit of your lighter and then I pinch that in half to get my line for my stitch guide. Now we've got a nice stitch guide and we're going to go from above one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And on the back, you'll have one, 
two, three, four. So you'll have four creases in total. And then we just cinch that together. And as you can see, four creases to each side. And then we can wrap our centre around. I always leave the clips on until I'm done. So, stitch off in the back however you personally prefer. There we go. And then I'm going to thread through. Like I said, you can glue the layers together. I just do it this way. But like I say, it's all about personal preference. You can use whatever technique fits best for you. I'm never one to judge. Whatever method is, is your preferred one, it'll work. So I'll just go through my layer. And then I'm going to go through the dead centre of this one. So right through the middle. And I'm going to line that up. And I decide which colour I want round because you can just twist it round. This is why I don't like gluing either because you can't move it like this. So decide which side you want everything on. I might do it that one because that goes more with the green because that's got more of the, the purple and the and that one's got more of the green and the yellow. So that's what my mind's saying anyway. And then I wrap round a couple of times really nice and tight. So it's nice and well together and again a couple of stitches in the back to stitch that all through and then take my clips off and there you go then begin to get your shape got some nine millimeter for the center didn't have any rainbow nine millimeter that i could find I probably got some somewhere but not quite where I could easily find it. Add my clip, I'm going to add a 50 millimetre one. Just on the back, just holding that while that sets. There we go. And I'm going to put a touch of glue here. Open our clip. We want this dead centre and we're going to wrap this round twice. Just let it set before we wrap it round. And there's one. You want to do it really tight. And it's moved because I didn't hold it while it was. I didn't wait for it to set long enough. My bad. That's better. I did it too tight. go right around the original ribbon so don't want to see any of the layer beneath get rid of any excess if you've got any touch of glue and there we go and I'm just going to do a scrunch middle for balance see if this is going to be enough that should be enough so we do an S shape this way and then you can take your lighter and pinch pinch watch your fingers other way around S shape in the opposite direction pinch and this is one inch ribbon by the way Okay. Yep, that will be enough. So on the flat side, you normally need about three inches for this. You can sometimes do a little bit more, a little bit less, but that's normally about minimum. So you put that round within the clip and then twist that over through the other flat side. And bring that into there. Give it a little twist again. And then 
what you do with your finger is in this bit you go like that and open that out and then you do exactly the same on the other side so that you can see your inner pockets like so and when you're happy with everything and everything's in place and you can see the amount of the layers that you want this is when you would take your hairspray and literally spray it spray it within an inch of its life spray it until it's damp i use extra strength max hold um 24 hour humidity resistant quick drying so i blast it with this turn it over blast the other side and then this sets in a matter of seconds and these pockets will stay exactly how you like them uh, whereas if you leave them every so often they will squish back and you just need to re-adjust them basically so there you go super super cute quad bow mark two thanks for watching bye